Gonzalo Lira Lopez, a 50-year-old Chilean-American writer who lives in Ukraine and has been reporting from Kharkov since the start of the current war, has not been heard from since Friday. There is reason to fear that he has been arrested by the SBU, or worse. The SBU, I looked this up, SBU, Ukraine is a security and intelligence service of some kind the security service of ukraine or sbu is the law enforcement authority and main intelligence and security agency of the ukrainian government in the areas of counterintelligence activity and combating terrorism the sbu also operates its own special forces unit um alpha group so the allegation again these are all alleged these are not confirmed reports i am just talking about this and this is what we're covering today is why this might be happening if it has indeed happened and what might have happened. And, uh, you know. uh, Coach Red Pill here, Gonzalo Lira, uh, has been allegedly arrested in Ukraine, if not more, on allegations of being involved with the Russian government. <laughs> Which, by the way, would make a lot of sense to me. That's unconfirmed. All of that's unconfirmed. But if he was being paid by certain foreign individuals in order to sow right-wing beliefs on the internet. That would track for me. Nexus of Midnight, thanks for the follow. Anyway, he was scheduled to appear on George Galloway's, quote, mother of all talk shows today, but Galloway wasn't able to get in contact with him. Let's watch that Galloway. clip really quick. If you ever find yourself almost wearing a fedora on TV, unironically, don't do it. It's with a great regret and even greater sense of concern and anxiety and more. The hat doesn't even match the suit, by the way. Can I point that out? It doesn't match anything else he's wearing that we can see. Sume says, anyway, I had a very shitty holiday. I had to work until 11.30 on Saturday, then I was supposed to work at 6 a.m. the next day. I was really looking forward to seeing my grandfather on Easter. I had to trade shifts with a co-worker because I wasn't going to be able to operate on three hours of sleep. I didn't get to see my grandfather on Easter. I also didn't get to see him today. I was in tears Saturday night because of how stressed out his job hat or this job has me. F Dollar General. I'm sorry. Fuck Dollar General. Hydra. Oh. Uh, that I have to tell you that there is still no sign of our first guest, Gonzalo Libra. We spoke with him on Friday and booked this appearance this evening. He has not yet logged in. We have not been able to contact him. Over the last hours, many, many people from around the world have been messaging me saying, if I ever go MIA anywhere, please don't use a picture like this of me. Find a find a, a, a flattering picture. There has to be one out there somewhere. I stream three hours a day almost every day for two years. There's got to be a pause frame of me that looks like, okay, she looks like a human being, you know? Nick says, it's sad that someone spying for an invading nation is getting punished for it? Question mark. Again, these are all just allegations that it is some time you're gonna use that one okay that's a good one since they heard from Gonzalo Lira sometimes since he answered any personal messages now some of those were prior to him answering ours if indeed it was him that was answering it is a matter of grave concern close to an emergency that this brave man, a Chilean citizen, and I hope the Chilean government is already cognizant of the fact uh, that their compatriot may be in grave danger in Kharkov, in the Ukraine. You may Just arrived, what did I miss? Um, not much. Gonzalo Lira, Coach Red Pill, has gone missing. May or may not be familiar with the work that Gonzalo has already done. He has brought us right from the front line. The truth as he saw it. As he saw it is kind of the important. Anyway. Down there on the street, in and amongst the war zone in Kharkov. His testimony may be 
wholly correct, partly correct, completely incorrect, but it is his take. And as I have been saying, how can you possibly know uh, that the information you are acting on is correct if you do not hear the other side of the story? This is really... So, this is based on um, something he posted here a little while back, which I will share with you now. So, I want you guys to know that if ever you don't hear from me for 12 hours hmm, during this conflict, if it's 12 hours or more, assume that I've been picked up by the SBU and assume that the people most responsible are the Daily Beast. The Daily Beast who deliberately lied about me, claiming that I'm not in Kharkov, admitted to the fact that people are looking for me and want to get a hold of me in the very hit piece that they wrote and that they contacted the Ukrainian government to make them aware that I'm in Kharkov, make them aware of my significance, make them aware so they can send some SBU goons to get me. Understand what the Daily Beast has done. And when I said, you know, in the, in the title of this, that the Daily Beast wants to kill me, I'm not being hyperbolic. Is it possible that he's pulling a stunt? Entirely possible. And we will read that Daily Beast article in a little bit so we can see what he's talking about there. <sighs> Continuing with this tweet thread. So after he didn't show up and he hasn't posted anything, of course, on his Telegram, on his YouTube, uh, anything like that. Uh, he didn't show up for this appearance he was supposed to have on this show uh, last Friday. Still haven't heard from him since then. Anyway, on the 17th, this person posted an unconfirmed report today in a comment by Oleg Petrov on Lyra's Telegram channel says that Lyra has been killed. Quote, breaking news, Gonzalo Lyra was killed by Ukrainian SBU after an investigation of Russian spies. Ukrainian authorities confirm 1830 local time. I have not been able to find any further information on this. Again, this is unconfirmed. This is just something someone said on Gonzalo's telegram channel so bear that in mind but it is interesting as a claim considering it seems very odd that he said himself if you go 12 hours without seeing him or hearing from him then something has happened and now we are seeing him not for days at a time etc etc Narnandia Owl says, accusing media of being critical of your BS of wanting to kill you. Just normal things. <laughs> so let's take a look at the Daily Beast article very quickly. At least as quickly as, you know, we can get through it. And see what he is claiming about them wanting to kill him. Uh, this is called, How a Sleazy American Dating Coach Became a Pro-Putin Shill in Ukraine. <laughs> and then we have some other lovely pictures of... Uh, Mr. Ligera. He peddled sexist bile and toxic relationship advice within a subculture populated by men's rights activists and I-words while living in Ukraine. Then the invasion started. As soon as Russia... Excuse me. As soon as Russia launched its invasion of Ukraine, Gonzalo Lira started sharing his thoughts and observations on the conflict in a run of YouTube videos and posts on Telegram and Twitter. The commentary and analysis I post is without picking sides, end quote. Lira, an American who's lived in the eastern Ukrainian city, city of Kharkov for years and was in Kiev at the start of the offensive, wrote in a recent post, trying to be as balanced and factually accurate as I can be. He began showing up on niche but notable podcasts and live streams where hosts introduced him as an unmediated font, font of the on-ground insights, as someone willing to share truths about the complex conflict that the mainstream media either can't or won't. He's also gained a slew of new followers on his Telegram, about 45,000 followers, up from 20,000 on March 1st, and it seems to be gaining hundreds more every day. Many people seem to view him as a valuable source and have taken to signal boost his content. Again, so Gonzalo, um, who we know as Coach Red Pill, does the whole Red Pill right-wing grift, has for a while, feminism is evil and the downfall of Western civilization, all that crap. Um, moved to Ukraine a while back, has been living there, and then at the beginning of the invasion started peddling 
uh, pro-Russian propaganda, basically. And I know he says he's being fair and balanced. He's not. It's pro-Russian propaganda and people on Telegram, which tends to be nowadays a platform with a lot of far right leaning people. I know it's also a place where other people gather. I've heard furries have communities and stuff on there, which is great. Um, but either way, uh, he's gained quite a following on there because he is a on the ground reporter who is willing to be a mouthpiece for right wing pro Putin talking points. Far right wing, I should say. But his fair and balanced accounts often involve wild claims about the supposedly obvious evil of Ukrainian President, President Zelensky. The comedian turned politician is a known, quote, cokehead, Lyra has claimed. A man who uses his people as shields, has provided arms to criminals who have terrorized the streets of Kiev, and have possibly, quote, deliberately tried to have a nuclear accident, end quote, depended on Russia, and possibly drag America into his war. Meanwhile, Lyra has portrayed the Russian assault as provoked, and as one of the most brilliant invasions in military history. That's the kind of language that is very fair and balanced, by the way and not at all, points to being a shill for the Russian government. <laughs> he has insisted that the invaders don't want to harm civilians or civilian infrastructures. You know, that's funny considering the amount of innocent civilians they've gunned down in the streets and civilian targets they've hit with missiles. Um, and are in fact taking pains not to, that the Russian advance is not stalled, but is in fact right on course, which is why they <laughs> abandoned trying to take the capital recently, and the Russian domination will likely be good for Ukraine in the end. He's also shared widely debunked conspiracy theories to support or build out his narratives, many of them revolving around Russian claims that they've found evidence of American bioweapons labs and research in Ukraine, which is untrue. He has, described, he has decried stories about Ukrainian resistance as obvious Western propaganda, and he has accused people who contradict his assessments of being idiots or paid shills. So as you can see, Gonzalo has been an outright uh, propaganda mouthpiece for Putin's invasion in Ukraine. Which, by the way, is a stupid thing to be when you're in the country that's still being ruled by the people being invaded. In one of his earliest posts on a prominent Manosphere forum, Lyra warned that HR departments are exceedingly dangerous to anyone who's been red-pilled. <laughs> Might be true, but not for the reasons he thinks. Independent experts who follow the conflict closely, of course, vigorously disagree. His claims are nonsense. Alexander Motil, an expert on Ukrainian affairs at Rutgers University who's been monitoring the conflict, told the Daily Beast, Not only do Lyra's narratives fly in the face of a vast amount of credible on-the-ground reporting, they fit perfectly with what Putin and his associates have been claiming for months. As Modal put it, in fact, Lear has been in such striking lockstep with Russian narratives on the conflict, sometimes even posting official government statements as definitive truths about it, that Russian propaganda outlets have used clips of him as a supposed source of external on-the-ground reporting for stories. Isn't it weird that people like Gonzalo and John Doyle are on exactly the same page as Putin? Remember recently when we did the dissection that took like three hours of John Doyle's recent video defending Russia and saying that Ukraine deserves this and that Putin is a great guy, etc., etc., for hours and hours straight? Isn't it weird that all these right-wing mouthpieces just seem to be in line with Russian interests? That's so weird. <laughs> More telling when Alexandra Hrykak, sorry, I'm probably butchering a lot of these names, um, a Ukrainian affairs expert who works at Reed College has been monitoring the conflict, first reviewed Lyra's claims she assumed he was likely a fictional persona created by the Kremlin to spread its message. These sorts of covert mouthpieces often claim to be fair and balanced outside experts, she noted, and tend to argue that their opponents are irrational, emotional, and need to consider facts. Lira is not fake, nor is there any evidence that he's a paid Russian agent. In fact, he's actually attempted to publicly distance himself from propaganda content that uses his clips. Which I think is part of it. 
Um, Daddy Sume says, I'll catch you guys later. Lyra depresses the shit out of me. I'm gonna nap. I might be back before the end of stream. Hit me up on Twitter for more takes. Love you, Hannah. Don't read this. Oh, well, you gotta say don't read this on stream before. Or I'm gonna read it first. Have a good night. <sighs> um, isn't pro-NATO military expansion playing for lib side instead of left and want to be neutral? You and your opinions on NATO expansion have nothing to do with whether or not it's okay for Russia to invade a sovereign nation. I don't know if you know that. Like, regardless of your opinions on Ukraine joining NATO, or any country joining NATO for that matter, they're an independent sovereign country that can choose that for themselves if they'd like, and if they want to do that, that doesn't mean Putin gets to invade their country because he disagrees with that position. Pretty simple. Let's see, but until just months before this conflict started, he didn't appear to present himself as a citizen journalist or a Ukraine expert or a foreign policy, excuse me, buff or a war nerd. He was a medium-sized Manosphere YouTuber, according to uh, Manuel Horta Ribeiro, a researcher at Switzerland's Ecole Polytechnique Federale La Lausanne. <laughs> Uh, Ribeiro studies the digital space on a loose constellation of blogs, forums, and social media accounts inhabited by pickup artists, men's rights activists, and in I words. Most of those who dwell in this world believe that men are the true oppressed gender, despite clear evidence that women still face undeniable and rampant systemic discrimination across the globe. Under the name Coach Red Pill, Lyra made videos and hosted digital seminars in which he offered dating, life, and relationship advice. In the Manosphere, a red-pilled person is someone who's realized hidden supposed truths about gender and relationships. These are usually tied st tired stereotypes about how all women supposedly think and reactionary ideas about the glory of traditional gender roles and relations and how their erosion screws over men. Some of Lyra's content offered reasonable run-of-the-mill tips on things like financial literacy, according to George Michael, a professor of criminal justice at Westfield State University and an expert on far-right groups who've been watching Coach Red Pill videos for years, but, Ribeiro added, most of his content was steeped in old and reductive views on gender and society, as well as outright vile misogyny, often defended using, quote, questionable interpretations of evolutionary psychology. Yeah, that's a pretty good way to talk about MGTOW types. Um, never date a woman in her 30s, end quote, Lyra, who's in his 50s, said in one video created in 2020. He also argued that, irrespective of what they claim they want, all women only truly desire money, a house, and kids, as child-rearing is the one thing that will biologically validate them, that women who are still single and childless in their 30s have supposedly ignored that imperative in order to live the, quote, hedonistic lifestyle that a, quote, degenerate Western culture pushes them towards chasing the hottest 15% of guys for meaningless sex, and that when they hit their 30s, they all get, quote, baby rabies, but <laughs> realize their looks are fading. Quote, it's biology, he said. Women age badly. Men age like wine. And when I think about fine wine, I think about, oh boy, can we get a, can we get an image of- Okay, here's a con oh, confession. Look at this, look at this bottle of fine wine. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just checking chat. I haven't looked over in a while. Anyway. <sighs> so they will supposedly lie and can connive to trick a man into marriage and pregnancy, after which they'll reveal their true face. In one of the earliest posts on a prominent Manosphere forum, Lear warned that HR departments are exceedingly dangerous to anyone who's been red-pilled, but he offered a guide on how men could supposedly turn these departments into a powerful weapon by learning how to manipulate HR staffers who he argued are predominantly women who in high school <laughs> were, quote, slutty looking and used to gossip and create all kinds of drama. Women who are the most easily manipulated, the most easily taken in by flattery and deference. Oh my god, he's dog shit. <laughs> 
Phrygiology says, as great military invasions of history go, it's up there with that time an idiot English noble of the 16th century wanted to return to the good old days of Henry III, so levied a private army and invaded France on his own. His ships missed the landing spot, his soldiers found a brewery and got drunk before hanging their officers, then were captured by the French and being sent back home with hangovers. Sounds like a good weekend. Hmm... Lyra's rapid transformation from a self-styled relationship expert to a small but prominent peddler of pro-Putin hot takes and conspiracies may seem bizarre, but according to experts on both sides of the manosphere and Russian misinformation, such a pivot makes sense. It speaks to a long shimmering... Sorry, rather, it speaks to a long simmering trend in both wor worlds, which kicked into high gear when the Ukraine conflict started. Lyra declined to respond to questions the Daily Beast sent him about his decisions to shift away from his Manosphere-centric content and towards dedicated Ukraine conflict commentary, or about the information he chose to share, where he finds it and how he assesses and frames it, or any of the other topics discussed in this article. Instead, he posted the Daily Beast communications with him on social media channels. He claimed in one post that he did so to entertain his followers and that they should thank the Daily Beast for the lulls. He also created a 22-minute long video preemptively warning his followers not to trust anything the Daily Beast writes, concocting a fantastical narrative in which every journalist secretly knows he and his ilk are right about the things they say, but choose to print lies because, quote, everybody who works at the mainstream media is by definition a piece of shit. He added that he's better than the mainstream media because he can, quote, say the truth, and suggested this article was developed at least in part because the Daily Beast writers envy and resent his freedom. <laughs> oh man, he's just taking a, a page from like the post 9-11 build up to like bullshit war crime invasion. The hate our freedom! <laughs> That's a cope. Let me get a drink of water real quick. Nard India Owl says, I'm guessing his red pill grifting was running dry and he happily used the chance to grift elsewhere. It's possible. This attitude towards the press and Lyra's affinity for pro-Putin views is far from shocking given the environment in which he's operated for years now. The Manosphere is a murky and chaotic space, riven by international divisions about the exact nature of masculinity or the ideal approach to relationships. Lear has in the past indicated that he dislikes I-words, even as he thrived in the larger subculture that they inhabit. But most of its diverse factions are united in their distaste for Western values and policies on gender equality connected to them because they believe those norms ultimately hurt men. Experts on this world told the Daily Beast members of the Manosphere also tend to be skeptical of the mainstream media, often viewing it as a source of propaganda created to slander them and bolster supposedly harmful and incorrect ideas, like feminism. <laughs> Good lord. <sighs> Meanwhile, over the last decade, Putin's regi regime has aggressively promoted the importance of traditional gender roles to Russia, explained uh, Harai Kak. It's done so in part by elevating groups and commentators who decry the supposed horrors of Western feminism and of gender and sexual freedoms and rights. Russia has also attempted to appeal to and build ties with, quote, anti-woke communities in the West, like the Manosphere, as part of its ongoing efforts to sow division and discord within its rivals' borders, adds Reese Crilly, a scholar at the University of Glasgow who studies the nation's communication strategies. In recent years, the Manosphere has grown increasingly intertwined with far-right networks and influencers, soaking up this radical fringe's resonant but distant ideas about evils of the West and adoration for Putin uh, and his strongman politics as well. This, escalated in this escalating entanglement, Riberio and other researchers have shown, is turning the Manosphere into an ever more conspiratorial and radical environment and a pipeline sending often dissatisfied men down deeper rabbit holes of extremism disaffected young man rather roland seven says i doubt he was brave enough to get arrested for his ideals if he believes what he says i mean he's disappeared now so electric coyote thanks for three months of prime what's going on with coach red pill he's disappeared some people think he's been killed in ukraine or at least picked up who knows <sighs> so 
So it should come as no surprise that according to the experts the Daily Beast consulted for this story, many figures in the manosphere embrace Russia as a bastion of traditional values that speak truth to Western powers and trust Russian narratives over Western ones. Pro-Russian sentiment could arise in this space any time the nation is in the news, Riberio said, due to conspiracy theories or even straight-up contrarianism. However, to date, most of the chatter experts have observed about the Ukraine conflict across the Manosphere have been piecemeal, focused on attempting to relate the crisis back to their own issues. Riberio has noted the occasional link to bioweapon conspiracy theories on I-word boards, for example, but far more talk about the perceived injustice of Ukraine's decision to draft men into military service while allowing women and children to flee. This outrage ignores the many women serving in Ukraine's military and civilian women staying behind to fight in support of the resistance. Tracy Farrell, Farrell a British Manosphere researcher based out of the Open University's Knowledge Medi Media Institute, said that she's seen posts about how hosting women refugees is good as a good opportunity for I-words to take advantage of their vulnerability. These people are trash. <sighs> According to publicly available materials in his own statements, Lyra has a long track record of jumping between careers. In the late 90s, he wrote pulpy action novels about manly men. In the aughts, he switched over to filmmaking for a spell. Then in 2010, he refashioned himself as a supposed expert in economics, writing commentary for Business Insider and Zero Hedge, and appearing as a pundit on alternative media programs. Lyra appeared to have a BA in history and philosophy from Dartmouth, but no discernible economics background. Stephen Keane, a relatively well-known Australian economist, told the Daily Beast that Lyra contact contacted him out of nowhere about a decade ago to compliment Keane's analyses and suggest that they work together on a project. Ultimately, Keane said, Lyra proposed a paid subscription content creation model, which he claimed he could effectively market for the two of them. Keane added that he looked Lyra up and saw that figures he knew in the alt-media world had interviewed him, so he figured he must be somewhat credible and decided to give him a shot. Ugh. It's an experience I regret, he told the Daily Beast. He said Lyra overstated and overpromised what he could do, then underdelivered. He claimed Lyra was arrogant and so rude to Keane's other employees and collaborators that it at least hastened many of their part departures. Keane said he regrets not doing better due diligence on Lyra, which he believed would have led to realize that he was not capable or trustworthy. He now describes Lyra as a, quote, sleaze, who any time he fails in a project uses his supreme self-confidence, excuse me, to refashion himself into an expert, sorry about that, on some new topic. If he is the new source for any claim, I'm sorry, if he is the source for any claim, my reaction would be to strongly doubt the veracity of that claim he said of Lyra's current commentary. That's a burn. Even by someone who used to think he was credible. <sighs> is there a, someone who likes Russia in the chat? Is it a tanky? Are you a tanky? Who's going to justify Russian imperialism by saying, but America? Because that's a bad argument, by the way. I don't know if you know this, but two wrongs don't make a right. Just putting it out there. Could be a Maupin fan. Are you a fan of Borger Kang? Mm, he'll send me a threat to sue me for what I've said, I'm sure, he added, but I'm entitled to my opinion and my opinion is fairly low. This approach to life and business is common among Manosphere dating coaches, uh, noted Variety Trot, a Manosphere watcher and lecturer at Australia, Australia, Australia's Monash University who's analyzed their activities and rhetoric. They project an aura of expertise and self-confidence to build a persona that some, she was not referring specifically to Lyra, then use to financially exploit often younger men for their failure to embody a valued sense of masculinity and sexual prowess. So it's not entirely surprising that around 2017, Lyra started popping up on Manosphere forums, presenting himself as an avuncular figure who'd gained wisdom through age that none of the usually long younger, more physically fit, or more traditionally macho figures in the space could provide. 
Over the next few years, he garnered a degree of success in the space, drawing in ad revenue for his videos as well as support on Patreon subscriptions and PayPal donations. At the end of 2021, he had over 3,200 Patreon subscribers paying 5 or 10 per month, each for access to his advice content. That is absurd numbers right there. Oh my god. Blow decks to say another tanky thing. Do it. Wait, is there another tanky? Putin did nothing wrong. Lovely. <sighs> However, his apparent penchant, and by the way, Russia's strategy is going great since they've now pushed other countries into fast tracking into joining NATO based on his aggressive policies. So, awesome job. However, his apparent penchant for petty internet drama and abrasive nature have generated a dedicated base of critics as well. Critics who've spent years trying to tell people in this space that from everything they've seen of him, they believe Lyra is a thin-skinned clown. Michael, the extremist expert who's watched Lyra for years, said that he's always sprinkled anti-Western, anti-globalism rhetoric into his videos, like many in the Manosphere. But also, like in some within the wider Manosphere, he's seemingly grown more conspiratorial over time. In 2021 especially, his Telegram and Twitter featured a ver veritable best of list of pandemic conspiracy theories about the supposed dangers of COVID-19 vaccines and nefarious purpose behind lockdowns and a plan to use the pandemic to take away freedoms and implement totality. Totalitarianism. Oh yeah, which is why he's such a big fan of Putin, who absolutely has never been a fan of totalitarianism. Say another pro-Putin thing, JN Tifa, so I can ban you. It'll be fun. Do it. Do it, bitch. <laughs> there we go. See ya. Yeah, don't come in here and shill for fucking Russia. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it today. Anyway. As of late mid or as of late as late as mid March of this year, Lear was offended offendedly posting offendedly. Interesting. Lear was offendedly posting things like, quote, thank God I am hashtag pureblood. This is a common term of self-identification and pride amongst anti-vax or COVID conspiracists who refuse the shots, which isn't creepy at all, by the way. In one appearance on the Manosphere podcast in mid-2021, an energetic Lyra told the host that he really wanted to talk about the war with China next summer, which he was sure would start to ramp up in February or March of this year. Sure enough that he'd be willing to bet much of what he owned on it. The host demurred that he didn't know much about politics, asked Lyra a few questions, but then attempted to guide him back to talking about dating and relationships. Uh... Lyra also noted that the tech world starting to crack down on the worst elements of the Manosphere, with social media and fundraising platforms booting off egregiously hateful content creators. In one video from late 2020, he complained that YouTube seemed to be limiting the visibility of his content, even to subscribers. In 2021, uh, pot in a 2021 podcast appearance, he fretted about the prospect of widespread deplatforming, a right-wing content creator who used to be friendly with Lyra and declined to promote his legal name or provide his legal name due to the Daily Beast, or to the Daily Beast, sorry, I'm starting to get ahead of myself said he suspected Lyra felt a need to pivot to avoid that fate. Lyra publicly disavowed this creator after he refused Lyra's demands that he denounce Zelensky on his own social media channels. The creator said he's not even a fan of the Ukrainian president, he just doesn't think he's a fascist, and does think that Ukraine's invasion is awful and senseless, or rather that the Russian invasion is awful and senseless, sorry. Hmm... Is Blod is Blod X now blaming Finland and Sweden, saying that their own self determination determinated choice to join NATO, it would be their fault if Russia then invaded them, which would be hilarious, by the way, if they tried to do that, considering how dog shit they're doing in Ukraine. Nernandia Owl says, using pure blood as an anti-vax term is certainly interesting. Then again, these people don't know how vaccines work, so I wouldn't be surprised if they're claiming vaccines have lasting effects on blood. They literally think that. Derp, uh, with 14 months, says, <laughs> Coach Dead pilled, am I right? JK. 
Seriously, if your defense is, but those other countries voluntarily joined a, a treaty organization, we have to invade them. Why? What? What do you mean? Do you think NATO is planning to do a, some sort of invasion of Russia? They're not. That's stupid. <laughs> you can't claim, like, preemptive attack when no one is doing anything to you. <sighs> Anyway, Trot said that several other influencers in the Manosphere niche uh, Lyra occupies have had a similar reaction to DB platforming, rebranding themselves for new careers or audiences. Platform shift is common for influencers who want to remain relevant, added Pharrell, the Manosphere expert. In November 2021, Lyra nuked his own term, most of his own life and dating advice content from public channels, and began posting more regularly under his legal name. The Daily Beast reviewed archive mirrors of his deleted content. He left only one video up on his Coach Red Pill channel, a brief warning telling his followers to flee the West before before war with China starts and inevitably accelerates a supposedly ongoing slide towards totalitarian rule. That's incredibly ironic. Let's see. Um, Procagam, thanks for gifting a sub. One second. Mm-mm-mm. They should go anywhere poor. They should go anywhere poor and underdeveloped, he said, because those nations supposedly can't afford to impose totalitarian policies. Just not South Africa, he cautioned, because if you're white in South Africa, you're a dead man. <sighs> Over the next few months, his remaining social media channels dropped the occasional bit of toxic and hateful relationship advice. Last month, for example, he responded to a question posed to him on Telegram about whether someone should distance themselves from their girlfriend if she chose to get vaccinated. Quote, a woman who's been vaxxed is useless except at... This is a quote. I'm sorry. Um... Quote, a woman who's been vaxxed is useless except as a cum dumpster because she must be sterile. For the nth time, the COVID-19 vaccine does not cause sterility. Um, but he seemed to largely shift over to COVID conspiracy commentary and the occasional note on a supposed coming geopolitical storm. However, as late as mid-February, he insisted that Russia would never invade Ukraine and that fears about a coming invasion were all drummed up by Western propaganda. Pointed out by Alex McKenzie, an expert on Ukraine and its history of conflict with Russia at the, end, at the United Kingdom's University of Liverpool, who reviewed a fair amount of Lyra's recent videos and posts, Lyra now insists in interviews that he saw the invasion coming well ahead of time because he's smart like that. When the war broke out, no matter what Lyra was doing, it made sense for him to stay something because he lived and had family there, Michael noted, but several observers uh, the Daily Beast spoke to suggested that he might have adopted his new persona as an ostensibly neutral but in fact evidently pro-Russian commentator on the conflict because he saw a market for the Putin-praising viewpoint in the spaces he inhabited, and he may have wanted a new hustle. Given the glaring alignment between Russian state narratives and Lyra's commentary, uh, Harai Kak, the Russian expert, speculated that he may be compensated by Russia, albeit perhaps indirectly. Russia's disinformation shills are, after all, an unfortunate fixture of the modern social media landscape and a partially salient concern as Russia ramps up its propaganda machine now. But Lear has publicly insisted that he has never been a paid agent of anyone and decried the use of his content in what he himself has identified as Russian propaganda, insisting, despite his clear parroting of pro-Kremlin talking points, that he's not on anyone's side and just tells objective truths as he observes and analyzes them. The individual's most popular with Lyra and his work, who the Daily Beast spoke to, believe this is true. They've seen no sign that he's taken Russian money. He also describes the conflict using terms like war and invasion, which blatantly fly in the face of Russian propaganda and media control laws. Considering that his stuff is made for Western audiences, I would say it's a little different, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, 
Um, from what I can ascertain, he's just a YouTuber, said Michael. This is his sincere belief. Instead, these individuals believe Lyra chooses consciously or otherwise to accept pro-Putin narratives and official Russian statements at face value and to reject everything the West says as propaganda, because it fits the ideological lens he's grown accustomed to using. I think he watches Russian news shows and then just copies what he sees there, added the far-right content creator who said Lyra basically subjected him to an ideological purity test. He added that if Lyra actually listened to what Ukrainian citizens and even Russian soldiers using encrypted mess messaging apps to speak freely actually say about the conflict, he might reconsider his skewed views. Honest belief may help to explain why Lyra seems willing to expose himself to danger. Both he, his critics, and experts observe and expert observers note that he's received death threats and withstood efforts to track down his home address from people outraged by his insistence on spewing propaganda that served the interest of the nation invading the country he has lived in as a foreign guest for years. I suspect what's going on is that people don't like to hear the truth, Lyra said in a recent video regarding these threats. <sighs> Uh, Modal, the Ukraine expert, said that it's far more likely Ukrainians see the world around them, contrast it to Lyra's narratives, and conclude that he's deranged and harmful. The far-right content creator who used to be friendly with Lyra suspected that for all his bravado. These threats are the only reason Lyra has disavowed his appearance in Russian propaganda. Deep down, he probably is glad that his clips were played on Russian state television, he mused. Lyra himself has suggested in recent interviews that he has appreciate, appreciated general TV pickup of his commentary by a lot of news channels in Russia and Ukraine. Lear has claimed that Zelensky administration sent men to his home in Kharkiv to disappear him, but that he miraculously avoided them and was at least recently hiding out in an undisclosed location in the city. The Ukrainian government did not respond to a request for comment, but many experts doubt the veracity of this account and question whether he's really still in Kharkov. Um, my friends who live there have mostly evacuated because of the intense shelling, said Hrai uh, Kak. The only friend I have still there describes a nightmare situation with food shortages and subsequent, or rather, frequent gas and water outages. Some parts of the city are craters and rubble. Whatever his exact location or relation to Russian propagandists, Lyra's pivot has been useful for Putin and his regime. The experts the Daily Beast spoke to for this story agreed. As the West has started to limit the reach of official Russian propaganda channels, people like Lyra have offered an organic and resilient pipeline for pro-Russian messages to reach the nation's far-right ideological allies abroad, argued Mackenzie. He's also a convenient figure that Russian propagandists can point to as supposed proof of the real independent voices in the West that see the merits of their claims, bolstering their efforts to stymie domestic dissent and galvanize support for the war. Lyra may help to hasten the spread of pro-Russian extremist views in the manosphere, too. By his own admission in recent posts, Lyra believes he's lost some of his old viewers from his Coach Red Pill days who aren't into the new content, although he believes he's picked up new followers who are interested in what he has to say. But many of those who have stated, stayed trust him as an authority. And as Michael pointed out, if you trust the person and respect his work in one area, then it follows that you would be amenable to his views on other topics like this as well. Trot said she doubts Lear will have a major influence on the contours of the entire manosphere. After all, he's just one guy, and she noted that some of his old viewers seem to think he's, quote, S-wording for Russia. Uh, which they just find amusing rather than convincing. But he certainly represents one more step in what she calls the space's already existing desire to move away from the current West. That is to say, its shift become an even more toxic and worrisome space than it already is. So that's the Daily Beast article that, again, Gonzalo Lira, Coach Red Pill, claimed <laughs> was going to get him uh, killed. And now he is missing, like I said. Uh, very interesting, very strange guy. I thought it'd be good now that we've covered that to maybe look at some of his content that he's been producing recently to see what exactly he's been saying. Not all of it, obviously. A lot of it's very long, but we'll kind of skip through and take a look. Either way, it's very interesting. It's entirely possible that he'll show up in the next couple days and he'll just have been in hiding. You know, he is in a war zone, so that is what it is. But I do find it interesting that he seems so intent, at least prior to his disappearance, to absolutely just push Russian propaganda narratives. So one of two things, what if he has been either captured or killed, 
One of two things is true here, and it's very funny to me. Not his death specifically. I don't find people's deaths funny inherently, but just the situation. Either he's legitimately someone who has somehow been paid by Russia to promote uh, Russian propaganda to Western extreme right-wingers through the typical Manosphere outlets with his, um, you know, name and face being known in those circles. Interesting. That would basically make him a foreign agent, right? Or what I find to be funnier is that he drove potentially his right-wing Manosphere red pill grift so far into the ground that he unintentionally became a mouthpiece for Russian propaganda, putting himself in the sights of counterintelligence officials from Ukraine, thus making him a target in a war zone, which is so stupid it could only be real. <laughs> Not saying it is. I'm just saying that's the kind of stupid thing that I believe would happen in 2022. I'm just saying. Grifting your right-wing Manosphere red pill bullshit so far that you are believed to be some sort of foreign Russian agent worthy of being picked up by Ukrainian counterintelligence. So anyway, uh, that's it for the general overview. Let's take a look at some of the stuff that he's been posting since the beginning of the invasion.